video walkthrough on a Keystone Bullet. So we'll start in the back here. That's where you're going to hook up your cable to if you're wherever you're going, provides cable. Most places don't anymore, but sometimes you roll up to the site and see some coax there. You can hook it up to there, watch TV through cable. Right over here, you can unscrew this cap right here. That's where you're going to store your, store your sewer hose. There's a tube and built in there for your sewer hose. All four corners, you have these stabilizer jacks. You're going to use these to stabilize your trailer. Don't try to use them to pick up one corner to get it level. Um, that's how you end up bending the jacks or damaging them somehow. If you want it to be level, use your tongue jack to raise and, lo raise and lower the front to get it level front to back. Back and then under some, under some blocks under the tires to get it level side to side. Water heater. Super simple. The only thing you need to do when you get this is put your plug in the drain. 15 16 is the socket size. I use a little short, exo short exo socket with an extension. Ratcheting wrench. Get it threaded by hand. Tighten it the rest of the way with my wrench. Now don't over tighten it because it is plastic threads. Once the plug's in, you can fill it with water, whether it be from your from the pump or from the fresh uh, city water. And you'll be good to go. Now, I definitely recommend draining it after every trip. You don't want water to sit in there. Um, it'll start to get stagnant and smelly, and it'll be a pain in the butt to kind of flush it out. So before you pull your plug out to drain it, crack your pressure relief. It'll squirt out water. Once it's done squirting out water, snap it closed, and then you can take the plug out. If you neglect to do this first, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a bath, and if you've been running it, you're gonna get a hot bath, and that's just no fun at all. And then besides that, oh, clean in here, clean in here. Make sure this whole area back here is clean. Recommend checking back there four times a year, once a quarter, just making sure it's clean. Other than that, it should if you clean it, take good care of it, it should last you quite a while. Exhaust for your furnace, just like your uh, water heater, keep it clean in here. They do make screens for these. Um, that's going to keep like road debris and insects from building nests in there. Fridge, again, keep it clean. Clean these little vents here. I even recommend taking this whole panel off a couple times a year, cleaning it back there as well. Right down here, get your, your sewer dump. The one on the left is going to be your gray. The one on your right is going to be your black tank. Your gray tank is your uh, shower and your sink water. Your black tank is your toilet water. Always recommend making, making sure that recommend making sure these valves are all the way closed before you take this cap off. And then I always do my black tank first. Let that get completely emptied. Then I do my gray tank. That'll flush out the hose, so I don't have to carry around a hose with black tank water in it. Short cord. 30 up short cord, this is your short cord. It'll be in that compartment on the driver's side. And they're about 25, 30 feet long. Most, Almost every place has got 30 amp. Outdoor shower, pop it open, you'll have hot and cold, and then the shower is on a hose just wrapped around in there. It's nice if you got pets or kids, spray their feet off before they go inside if they're playing in the mud or in the sand. Right over here, fresh water. This is where you rest your hose in there. Fill your onboard fresh tank. Um, I like to monitor its progress from the inside rather than waiting until I hear water squirt out from everywhere because if anything were to fail, you might end up accidentally pressurizing your fresh tank. And if you start doing that, um, it could uh, burst or could rupture. So just, it's gravity fill, so pay attention, stay near it until you until it's full. That way you can shut the water off right away. And then just like your water heater, recommend draining it after every trip. You don't want water sitting in there, it'll start to get stagnant and smelly. So that right over there is your drain for your fresh tank. City water, this is where you're going to hook your hose up to if where you're going has water. Then you won't need to run your pump, you just run off of city water pressure. Got pass-through storage here with some cranks. Got a manual crank, that'll be the manual crank for your stabilizer jacks. You can also buy, if you got a drill with a little adapter, you can put a three-quarter socket on there and run it with a drill. If you are going to do it with a drill, it's going to be running faster than it normally does, so you want to lubricate these more often, because you always want to lubricate these. All the moving, all the parts that move, there's a threaded rod that goes through the middle of it, make sure you keep that lubricated. Because if not, if they're not lubricated, they could seize up, they could be seized up in the down position, making it difficult to be able to transport it. Right here, got some real good information here. You got your gross vehicle weight rating, that's the most this trailer will ever weigh. Um, so it's not just dry weight, keep that in mind. Then you have cargo carrying capacity, the capac the weight of it with water. But here is the most important numbers, in my opinion. 65 PSI. You want to keep your tires at 65 PSI. 
what there's gonna be a different number printed on the tires that's the number you want come over here get your group 24 battery it's RV marine grade battery in the winter I recommend taking the battery completely out storing it somewhere warm warmer I guess your basement or garage anything warmer just sitting out on the side because the winter's harsh on these batteries and then if it's gonna be a long time between trips couple weeks I recommend disconnecting the negative lead off your battery so the battery is not nothing's using your battery while you're away and over here you're pre-wired for solar so you buy the kit for solar you can hook it up through there and then all that does is trickle charge your battery so you can go primitive camping somewhere and at least try to keep your keep running off of the battery without it dying Let's see if I can pop this open. dual 20 pound cylinders they're all full so you don't got to worry about getting them filled Let's see if I can't Punch it down. Well, if you see in here, you can't even see in there. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna unbungee this. Nah, I'm not even gonna bother doing that. You see in there? There's a little black valve right here, a little handle, how it moves. That's your selector. So, you see it's pointing this way? It's pointing to this tank. It's gonna pull from this tank first. When this tank were to get emptied, if this one were to be on, it'll automatically switch to pulling from this tank. However, that little black bar won't rotate, indicating it's switched to tank. So keep that in the back of your mind. And then some people put it in the middle, thinking it's going to pull from both tanks equally. It doesn't work that way, it's one or the other. Then manual power, manual jack, not power jack. Um, you can upgrade to a power tongue jack if you want. If you would like to do that today, just make sure you let someone know. Talk to parts, get get one ordered. We can try to get one installed today. Seven way, this will plug into the back of your truck. This is what's gonna allow like the turn signals and the marker lights on the trailer to work. And then the brakes in the trailer to work. Well the brakes on the trailer will only work if you have a brake controller in your truck. Then chains, make sure when you hook them up, you cross them. Right over here, hook to the other chain is a breakaway. That goes to a little box in there. If the trailer would ever get unhooked from your truck, it's going to pull that pin and that brake break away, activate the brakes up on the trailer, keep it from rolling into traffic. Here's that crank, and here's the other side of that storage compartment. Move it along. Outdoor power, it's GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit, so if one will trip, they're all going to trip. All right, we'll make our way to the inside. On the inside. Let's get some lights in here. One on the left, your main lights. One on your right will be awning lights. See? Awning lights. And the switch right above it does your awning, so. Make sure you don't have your door all the way open, or else your awning's gonna run into it. And you might risk bending the awning arm, scratching the door. You don't want that. And then they do not stop automatically when it goes out. You have to visually look. When you see that bare tube and the flap hanging vertically, when you see that sticky right there, you're all the way open. They are adjustable for pitch. Grab right here, pull it down. You can pitch one end down. So if it's raining, you can have water one off to the corner rather than all the way along the edge. Or you can pitch them both down if it's kind of sunny out and the sun's in your eyes. But if you have it out and it's raining, that's fine. But if you start getting huge gusts of wind, big heavy rain, roll your awning up because you don't, the wind will rip the fabric, it will bend an arm. So just keep that in mind. And then if you roll it in wet because it was raining, as soon as you get the opportunity to, as soon as it gets sunny and warm out, roll it back out, leave it out, let the sun kind of dry the water out because if that is rolled up holding water, Next time you open it up, you might see black streaks all over it. It might be smelly because it was holding moisture. Alright, we do have a radio over here. Power button. Drive because we know right now, if you just tap it, it's mute. So if you push and hold, it turns it on and off. 66380. You do have these. Oop. To go hit mute again. Mute off. There you go. Hit. Oh, 
you can select it when it's in this menu too. All right, there you go. Channel. Let's just pick one so you guys can hear audio. So volume, very simple. Presets, push and hold these to save your preset. You have an HDMI pass through, but it's not hooked up to anything. You can hook up a TV to it and you'll be able to hear the TV audio through the speakers. And then you have, you can select auxiliary mode, which is here, AV. That's if you want the audio to this, from the TV coming through. AM, FM, HDMI pass through. Again, that's not hooked up because there's no HDMI cord on the other side. USB, hook your phone up through USB. Then Bluetooth, you hit Bluetooth, look for Furion on your phone. And you'll be able to sync your phone to it. And, be, and you'll be able to listen to whatever music you want off your phone. And then, like I said, push and hold. Just turn it off. Right over here. Turns into a bed, very simple. This is a jackknife couch. Lift up at the bottom. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's a jackknife. Lift up at the bottom. You do have storage underneath there. Lays flat, so if you wanted to use it as a bed that way, you could. Or you have like a Murphy bed. Pull these pins right here. This will fold out like that. Then you just unfold the rest of your mattress and that makes a Murphy bed. That's what I've always been told it was called. It's nice. It keeps it compact in here. Gives you plenty more room for extra storage and whatnot. Put this back in its original position. Easy peasy. This does turn into a bed as well. Lift them table off the hooks in the back. Fold this leg up. Rest the table on these little shelves here. Take these back cushions, lay them on the table while it's lowered. That creates a platform to sleep on. But here, like I was saying, you have stuff for TV. Cable hookups there. Um, oh, sorry, AV hookups there. Cable and antenna you hook up through here, so you just plug your TV into here if you're going to use your antenna. Make sure the booster off is off if you're going to use cable. Make sure, it's, make sure it's off if you use antenna, make sure it's on. Sorry about that. Then you have a power outlet for TV, and then one extra one if you have like a... If you wanted a Blu-ray player or a, a game console or whatever, you can hook it up to there. Microwave. Works like a regular household microwave. It's only going to work when it's plugged in. There's nothing super special about it. Light and fan. Well, fan and then light, rather. Folding cooktop. These are very simple, very basic. Turn them to light. Light them with a lighter. Barbecue lighter, match, cigarette lighter, lit cigarette. Whatever you have to light them, you can light them when it's on. Light. Very simple. Right below that, got your breaker boxes. Has all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances. Have all your fuses for your 12 volt. So you have 15s and 240s. Keep. I recommend keeping some spares. Over here, you have a propane gas detector that's hardwired to the 12 volt system. So there's no batteries you have to worry about changing. However, if that battery up front I was showing you starts to lose voltage, that'll do some low voltage chirp saying that battery up front is not is dying. So that with the case, plug your camper in and let that battery get charged up. Do got a smoke alarm here, takes 9 volt batteries, same as your carbon monoxide alarm, takes 9 volt batteries. Up here, you're pre-wired for a Furion Wi-Fi thing. This is just a, like a cover plate, you'd have to go on the Furion website and order their, their branded Wi-Fi thing. And all that does is you would, if you order it, you can have it shipped to your house, pull this off, slide your new part on. Then keep this, because if, you, if you're going to sell your camper, there's no point in giving them your expensive Wi-Fi thing. And then what you do is you just pay Furion a monthly payment. I think it's like 60 bucks a month for 10 gigs of internet. So it's kind of pricey, but if you choose to do that, then you, won't be able to, then you won't have to use your mobile data while you're out camping. AC, super simple. It does not have heat. It's optional. But if you do all the black, it's just the fan. If you do the AC, it'll turn the compressor on and run the AC portion of it. And then you do have temperature. Red is the red doesn't mean hot. Red means it's the warmest the AC will get. Blue means it's the coldest the AC will get. Then you can close these vents here, and then you can open these ones, and they'll come out. It'll kind of divvy out the side. 
fridge, super simple. You have on or off, and then auto or gas. It's even labeled what it looks like. Just recommend leaving on auto. Auto's gonna default to 110. So if it senses it's got 120 volts, 110, 120 volts, it'll run on that. If it were to lose power, someone would trip over the short cord, campground would, lo campground would lose power, it'll automatically switch to running off of propane if your propane were to be on. That'll save your food. Or you can choose to strictly have it on propane if you know you're primitive camping somewhere. These do take about 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temperature. So keep that in mind if you have the ability to plug it in at your home the night before. Got your monitoring panel. You can read battery. Your battery is always going to read that it's fully charged when you're plugged in. You can read fresh tank, how full your fresh is, black, and gray. Now, you do not have a second gray tank, so ignore gray 2. They use these panels through all the different models, so ignore gray 2. Then you have controls for water pump. That's if you're going to use the water from your fresh tank and need your water pump to be on. If you're using your city water, you don't need that on. And then you have water heater on gas and electric. If you are going to run it on electric, make sure there is water in it. Also, you're going to burn out the heating element. And you also you also can run both of these at the same time. That's what I do. I do both at the same time. And then after a while, I'll shut off the gas and just leave it on electric. That's going to allow it to get a little bit hotter quicker. And then your thermostat for your furnace. Super simple. You can see this little tab. It says off. It's pointing that way. Click it over. It turns on. You can adjust the temperature underneath right here. And then your furnace is ducted. You got a duct over there. I think you got... And then one over here. And then there's one in the bathroom. And these, these campers with these furnaces get pretty hot pretty quick. One right up there. Just another vent here. For ventilation. If, it's, if you just want to run... Run some... Uh, run some... Uh, windows open. Some fans in here. Circulate air through there. If you don't really want to... On the AC, that's what it's good for. You have another one in here. This one has a fan in it. I recommend running that when you take a shower. Light switch for the bathroom here. Plenty of storage over there. Medicine cabinet, very basic. This is important. So any outlet labeled GFCI is connected to this outlet. So like I was talking about the outside, they're all in the same circuit. So if any of them would have tripped at GFCI, this is where you come in and you reset it at this outlet right here. Toilet, very simple. As long as you're pushing this pedal right here, it's going to flush. Um, you can keep holding it, it's going to keep flushing. Bath, bathroom, very bathtub, very simple. Hot and cold. Turn them both on or one on. Pull up here. That's going to divert it to your shower head right there. You can also turn it on and off at your shower head right here. Yep. Very simple in the bathroom. Not a, not a whole like, a heck of a lot going on. I do like how much storage there is in the bathroom though. All right, well, that's pretty much it for our virtual tour of your um, Keystone Bullet. I hope you guys found this video informative. I hope you guys really enjoy using this camper, and goodbye.